this video, I'm going to show you how to solve five flow rate calculations questions and we are starting right now. Hello, this is Dr. Dankwa. And if this is your first time here and you like to learn pharmaceutical calculations, tips, tricks, and strategies, then start by subscribing and clicking the bell so you don't miss anything. So the questions in this video are from our Naples Calculations Question Bank. This question bank is the largest pharmaceutical calculations question bank on the planet. Now, if you'd like to check it out, I'm going to put a link to it in the description. Also, if you'd like to expand your understanding of fluid calculations, we have so many videos on the channel and I'm going to link a playlist in the description as well. So let's get right to it. This question says a patient is receiving azithromycin intravenously at a rate of 16 drops per minute. How much solution is infused in 8 hours if the infusion set delivers 20 drops per milliliter? Round to the nearest whole number, do not include units. So in this question, the goal is to determine the volume of the intravenous bag that is infused in a time of 8 hours and you've been given the drop factor of the administration set to be 20 drops per milliliter. Now since the question is asking for volume, what we need to do is identify the parameter in the question that has a volume component and you'll notice that the calibration factor or drop factor is given as 20 drops per milliliter. So there's a milliliter component which indicates volume. The other term that you have in there is the time in hours and then you have the flow rate in drops per minute. So we are going to start off with the calibration factor and we are going to make the statement that 1 milliliter contains 20 drops. And then we are going to multiply this by the flow rate which is 16 drops per minute. And so at this point the drops can cancel out and now you are in milliliters per minute. But notice you need to have the volume component by itself so that will be units of milliliters and so to get rid of the time element we multiply by the duration of the infusion which is given as eight hours so we multiply this by eight hours but notice that minutes and hours are not consistent so we need to go ahead and convert the hours to minutes using the conversion factor that one hour is 60 minutes so the hours cancel out the minutes also cancel out and now you only have the milliliter term so what we will do next is we'll go ahead and multiply all the terms in the numerator and divide by all the terms in the denominator. So we'll have 1 milliliter times 16 times 8 times 60 divided by 20 times 1. And this is going to be equal to 384 milliliters. But the question says round to the nearest whole number. 384 is already a whole number so we don't need to do anything there but it says do not include units so we are going to end up with the answer being 384. This question says a 1 liter bag of normal saline is infusing at 75 milliliters per hour. How many hours would the bag last? Round to the nearest tenth. do not include units. So the goal of the question is to determine the duration of infusion in hours and you've been given the volume in liters and the infusion rate in milliliters per hour. Now there are a number of ways you could do it. The first one is to use dimension analysis and since we are looking for time in hours, we'll start off with the flow rate milliliters per hour and that would imply that in each hour, you are infusing 75 milliliters. So we can multiply this by the volume of the bag which is 1 liter. Now 1 liter is a thousand milliliters so the liters will cancel out and now the milliliters will also cancel out and so all you have here is the hours in the numerator and so that would imply then that we multiply all the times the numerator which will be one hour times one times a thousand divided by 75 and that's equal to 13.33 hours now the question says round to the nearest tenth do not include units and so the answer here will be 13.3 now the alternative approach you may want to use is using the equation. So what that would look like is your rate, which is your flow rate, is equal to volume divided by time. And so if you are interested in the time, then you can rearrange the equation to be time equals volume over rate. Now you have the volume given as one liter. You want to convert that to milliliters because your flow rate is in milliliters per hour. So one liter is a thousand milliliters. And so your volume is going to be equal to 1000 milliliters. 
So you can substitute that into the equation. So time is going to be equal to a thousand milliliters divided by the flow rate, which is 75 milliliters per hour. The milliliters cancel out and the hours go to the top and you end up with 13.3. This question says the recommended dose of aminophilin for children is 1 mg per kilogram per hour by injection. 15 milliliters of a 30 mg per milliliter solution is added to a 150 milliliter bottle of D5W. At what rate in milliliters per hour should the injection be delivered to a 35 pound child? Round to the nearest tenth, do not include units. So here the goal of the question is to determine the flow rate in milliliters per hour. Now to do that you need to know the total volume and also you need to know the amount of drug in there based on this question. So in the question you've been given the normalized mass rate of the drug which is 1 milligram per kilogram per hour. What it means is that for each kilogram that the patient weighs for each hour, the patient receives 1 milligram of aminophilin. You've also been given the volume of the infusion and you've been given the weight of the patient but also you've been told that 15 milliliters of the aminophilin solution which has a concentration of 30 milligrams per milliliter is added to the 150 milliliter bottle of D5W. So before we actually even use dimensional analysis here, which would be the best way to solve this type of problem, what we need is the total volume and also the amount of drug in the volume. Okay, we need the total volume of infusion and we need the amount of drug that is being infused. Now, the way we find the total volume is to take the volume of your additive, which is 15 ml of aminophilin, and the volume of the bag. So here, total volume is going to be equal to 15 milliliters plus 150 milliliters, and that gives 165 milliliters. Because what you're actually doing is taking 15 ml from the vial, adding it to the 150 milliliter bottle, so now your total volume should be 165. We also need to know how much aminophilin is in this 165 milliliter solution. And the way we do that is to basically take the concentration. So here, let's put the amount of aminophilin. And that's going to be equal to the concentration, which is 30 milligram per milliliter times the volume, which we are taking out. We are taking out 15 milliliter. So the milliliters cancel out. And that gives 450 milligrams. So what that means is in this 165 milliliter volume, it contains 450 milligrams of drug. So now that we've established that, we can quickly actually proceed to find the answer to the question, which is the flow rate in milliliters per hour. And the way we do that is to start off with the volume that we have. So we have 165 milliliters, which contains 450 milligrams. Now we multiply this by the normalized mass rate, which is 1 milligram per kilogram per hour. So the milligrams can cancel out. Now you're in milliliters per kilogram per hour, which means we need to multiply by the patient's weight. The patient is 35 pounds. So we multiply this by 35 pounds. But notice the pounds and the kilograms are in different units. So we need to convert the pounds to kilograms. And we use the conversion factor that 2.2 pounds is equal to 1 kilogram. So now the kilograms cancel out, pounds cancel out, and you are in milliliters per hour. So since we are using dimensional analysis, the next step is to multiply all the terms in the numerator and divide it by all the terms in the denominator. And so that would imply that we have 165 milliliters times 1 times 35 times 1 divided by 450 times hour times 2.2. And that's going to be equal to 5.83 milliliters per hour. But notice the question says round to the nearest tenth. Do not include units and so the answer will be 5.8 this question says a 25 milliliter vial containing 2 milligrams per milliliter of a drug is added to 225 milliliters of d5w and given iv via an infusion set that delivers 20 drops per milliliter how many drops per minute should be given to administer the drug at a rate of 15 milligrams per hour round to the nearest whole number do not include units. 
So a careful analysis of the question suggests that you are determining the flow rate in drops per minute. And in the question you've been given, the volume of the valve which contains the drug, you have the concentration of the drug which is 2 milligrams per milliliter. You have the volume of the D5W which is your volume of infusion and that's 225 milliliters. And then you have the calibration or drop factor given as 20 drops per milliliter. And then you have the mass rate given as 15 milligrams per hour. Now to solve this question, there are two things you need to do before you actually proceed using dimension analysis. The first one is to determine the total volume. The reason being, you have a 25 milliliter solution of the drug which are going to add to the 225 milliliter bag. So your total volume is going to be the 25 milliliters plus the 225 milliliters for the bag. And that's going to give a total volume of 250 milliliters. Now, the next thing that is also needed is the amount of drug that is actually in the 250 milliliter bag. And the way you determine that is to actually use the concentration and the volume. So we know the volume of the vial to be 25 milliliters. And then the concentration of the drug in that vial is 2 milligrams per milliliter. So what that implies then is you have 2 milligrams per milliliter and you have a 25 milliliter valve. So we multiply this by 25 milliliters. So the milliliters cancel out and that implies that you have 50 milligrams of the drug. So now that we have this two important information, we can proceed using dimensional analysis as follows. We will start off with the volume, which is 250 milliliters. And in this volume, you have 50 milligrams of drug. So we have 50 milligrams of drug in a 250 milliliter volume. Now, the next thing we do is multiply this by the drop factor. So the drop factor is given as 20 drops per milliliter. So now you have 20 drops per milliliter. At this point, the milliliters can cancel out and you notice you are in drops per milligram. And so the next step is to multiply this by the mass rate, which has been given as 15 milligrams per hour. So you multiply this by 15 milligrams per hour. Now the milligrams cancel out and you're in drops per hour, but we need to be in drops per minute. So we need to convert the hour to minutes and we use the conversion factor that one hour is equal to 60 minutes. And so the hours cancel out and now you're in drops per minute. And so since we are using dimensional analysis, we multiply all the terms in the numerator and divide by all the terms in the denominator. So that would imply that you have 250 times 20 drops times 15 times 1 divided by 50 times 60 minutes. Now you notice that the question says round to the nearest whole number, do not include units. And so the answer is going to be equal to 25. This question says, a physician order calls for isoproteinol hydrochloride IV infusion for a patient with breathing difficulty in the ER. 20 milliliters of a 1 to 5,000 solution of isoproteinol hydrochloride is added to 600 milliliters of a 5% dextrose injection. At what flow rate in milliliters per minute should the infusion be administered to provide 10 micrograms of isoproteinol hydrochloride per minute? Round to the nearest 100, do not include units. So a careful analysis of the question suggests that you're looking for flow rate in milliliters per minute. And in the question, you've been given the volume of the drug that needs to be added. You've been given the concentration of the drug in the vial. You also have been given the volume of the 5% dextrose injection. And you also have the mass rate of the drug being infused, which is given as 10 micrograms per minute. So to solve this question, there are two things you also need to know. You need to know the total volume that is being infused and you need to know the total amount of drug which is also being infused in micrograms. So let's start off with the total volume. The way you get the total volume will be to take the volume of the drug which is being added, which is the 20 milliliters. So now we have 20 milliliters and that's being added to the 600 milliliter bag. So plus 600 milliliters. The total volume will be 620 milliliters. Now, the next parameter that we need is the amount of drug that is being infused in micrograms. 
So we are going to make use of the concentration here, the 1 is to 5,000, and that by definition implies that you have 1 gram of drug in 5,000 milliliters of solution. We want to find the amount in grams that is present in 20 milliliters. So we go ahead and solve for our unknown, which will be x. x will be equal to 1 gram times 20 milliliters divided by 5,000 milliliters the milliliters cancel out and this is going to be equal to 4 times 10 to the power negative 3 grams so since we need the quantity in micrograms we are going to proceed with a quick conversion and so that would imply that you have 4 times 10 to the power negative 3 grams and we're going to multiply this by the conversion factor 1 gram is equal to 1 times 10 to the power 6 micrograms the grams cancel out and this is going to be equal to 4,000 microgram. And so we can now proceed with using dimension analysis. And the way we want to do that is to start off with the mass rate, which would be microgram per minute, the 10 microgram per minute. So that would imply that you have 10 micrograms per minute. And then we multiply this by the volume. The volume we are referring to here is 620 milliliters. So we multiply this by the 620 milliliters. And in this 620 milliliters, it contains 4,000 microgram. So now the micrograms will cancel out. And now you're in milliliters per minute, which is your target units. And so we can proceed by multiplying all the terms in the numerator and dividing it by all the terms in the denominator. And that would imply that you have 10 times 620 milliliters divided by minute times 4,000. Now the question says round to the nearest hundred, do not include units. And so the answer is going to be 1.55. So I hope you found this video tutorial useful. If you did, be sure to like it and share it. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments and I'll get to them as soon as I see them. If you'd like to learn more pharmaceutical calculations, tips, tricks and strategies, then start by subscribing and clicking the bell so you don't miss anything. My job here is done but yours has just begun. Thank you and I'll see you in the next video.